family in Jesus. Uh, I feel led by the Lord this morning to just take a pause on the teaching of the book of Acts uh, because I feel led in my spirit that there is someone this morning that is really battling and struggling with something. Uh, I, I feel that it could maybe be a daughter of God. I don't know why I feel that. But I want to share this one scripture with you this morning. Whoever you are, and whatever you are battling with, I don't want to stand here this morning and, uh, and pretend that I know what you are going through because I'm not walking in your shoes. Uh, but what I do know is this scripture that I want to give you this morning. If you focus with everything inside of you on this scripture, uh, I can almost guarantee that the Lord will pull you through and the Lord will bless you and the Lord will keep you. And he'll open brand new doors for you. So if you want to follow this morning, I'll be reading out of the book of Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14. So the Bible says here, now this this scripture is for you, whoever you are, the Lord knows who you are. The scripture is for you. The Bible says, for this reason, I kneel before the Lord from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. So firstly, what the Lord is saying to us here is, um, in the scripture, my place is at the feet of the Father. And, and it's, it, it is a, a place of humility and it is a place of um, I, I must have reverence towards the Lord. Uh, I must know who God is. And, and to be angry at God for something that is happening in our life does not help us at all. Uh, we must realize that there are seasons in our life. And the Bible says that it rains on those who uh, serve God and on those who don't and the sun shines on those who serve God and on those who don't so there are seasons for uh, for those who don't believe in the Lord that it will go good in their life but they will also have rough times and it's the same with with us we we have pleasant times and good times serving the Lord but there will come times where where we will have to be challenged and that's why Jesus put that scripture in the word of God uh, in, in the Gospels, teaching us that when that mountain stands before us, not if, when, then we, we need uh, faith as big as a mustard seed just to get through that mountain, to tell that mountain to move. So whatever you, you are facing today, to know that our place stays at the feet of the Father, and that humility will get us out of the position, the, the difficult position that we are sitting in now. It will not be anger. It will not be frustration. It will be humility. Then the word of God goes, goes further. In verse uh, 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches, um, he may strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit in your most inner being. So again, sometimes when we are going through difficult times and, and when we are facing maybe stress or worries or anxiety, um, sometimes we look for our power outwardly. We look for our power in, in, in things that the world teaches us and we look for power in, in clever people or in educated people. But here the Lord says that he will strengthen us through the Holy Spirit in our most inner being. So to know that to get through whatever you are facing this morning is purely going to be through power of the Holy Spirit and He's going to bless you in your most inner being. Excuse me. He's going to bless you in your most inner being. Um, then verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Now this is a very important thing. We've spoken about this so many times that that um, when we are going through a time of of anxiety and stress and pain and depression then then we tend to go to our logic and our analytical minds to try and work out how we are going to get through this but here the scripture clearly teaches us that that, that christ must dwell in our hearts through love 
not through frustration or he mustn't he mustn't only dwell in in our in our minds um, or we mustn't take our minds captive to the obedience of Christ alone but Christ must dwell in our hearts because ultimately whatever I have in my heart I will speak and what I speak I will believe and what I believe I'll live so if in my heart there's there's anxiety and stress and hatred and, and strife and malice and, and anger that's ultimately what I will speak and and if I speak it enough I'll live it um, so to know that Christ will dwell in our hearts through love and love covers a multitude of sins goes further in verse 18 um, that uh, we may have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how deep um, is the love of Christ. So uh, this scripture, very important, may have power together with the Lord's holy people. So many times when we feel that we are going through a difficult time, we, we go into seclusion, we, we take ourselves away from the body of Christ. And, and I want to urge you and encourage you this morning, uh, whoever you are, brother and sister, um, don't do that. Don't go and sit alone somewhere and, and try and work this out alone. Um, I get the fact that, that, especially in churches, there are people that are negative. I get the fact that there are people that might put you down and, and, and might speak against you. But I also know the fact that there are people that override them. There are people that, that concentrate on the Word of God and love the Word of God and speak the truth of the Word of God and, and encourage and motivate and edify. So I want to encourage you, please don't put yourself into seclusion. Don't, don't lock yourself away. Please still come and fellowship with us so, so that we can, uh, we can pick you up and, and walk this path with you. Amen. Then the Word goes further. In verse 19, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all measure of the fullness of God. So the love of Jesus surpasses all knowledge that I have. So it doesn't matter how many degrees I have behind me, the love of Jesus is above that. It doesn't matter how many times I've studied philosophy or psychology, the love of Jesus is above that. To know that the love of Jesus will conquer anything in our lives that comes against that. And then this is um, most probably one of the most beautiful scriptures in the Word of God. Uh, Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we may ask or think, according to his power that works within us. Amen. So brother... Sister in Christ, whoever you are, to know today that whatever you are facing, that the Lord can do exceedingly abundantly above all you may ask or think or imagine or dream or expect today. And, and don't take my word for it as a human. Take the word of God and stand firm on the word of God today and know that there is a way out. There is. And know that there are people it will stand with you. So again, I want to urge and encourage you today to please stand firm. Please do not allow this world to, to take a hold of your, your, your heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit to such an extent that they pull you completely away from the Lord. Please do not become one of those statistics. One of those that fall away and, and just... Um, just leave the Lord because you are facing something that as a human, it looks like you cannot uh, overcome it. But to know that the word of God says, yes, to man, this is impossible. But to God, all things are possible. Amen. Um, so I want to encourage you this morning, brother, sister in Christ, whoever you are, please in Jesus name, hold on to him. Bow down at, at, at the feet of the Father. Hold on to Him. Know who He is. Know what He can do. And know that He is the one that can take you out of this. Amen. Please join me in prayer now. Father God, we 
We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the truth of your word. And I thank you, Father God, that I know strongly that you laid on my heart to share this with. I believe it is a, a, a daughter of yours this morning, Father God. And I pray, Father, that this morning, please, that your Holy Spirit will do his perfect work in their lives today. I pray that the Holy Spirit will anoint them and baptize them afresh. I pray that the Holy Spirit will drive out anything and, and, and everything that is around them um, that is causing this distress and pain and anger and anxiety and, and worries. And then I pray, Lord, that you will imprint and implant the love of Jesus Christ into them. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for the testimony that is going to come out of this because I know what the result of obedience is, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will move powerfully in the life of, of that child of yours, Lord. And I thank you for this, Father God. I worship you. I bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. And I pray and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. Um, I hope and pray that you had a blessed week. And I, and I hope and pray that going into this new weekend, this gift from the Lord, um, that you will be able to experience the Lord, that you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, um, that you will seek Him and find Him. Uh, so until we meet again tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.